Maybe you've heard that one angel or another guides your chart. I did a podcast about it just a couple of weeks ago. But did you know you can also work with the angels every new full and quarter moon? Well, you can. And honestly, it can change your life and also change your relationship with the angel. Welcome to the Mainly Moonology podcast. I'm your host, Yasmin Boland, an award-winning astrologer and the Sunday Times best-selling author of books including Moonology and creator of the Moonology Oracle Cards. My intention for this podcast is to help you understand how you can create your dream life using Mainly Moonology, the moon, as your guide. Hey, it's Yasmin here. Thank you for tuning in. So a couple of weeks ago, I did a podcast about the angels in your chart. If you haven't had a listen, have a listen. You don't need it though to to hear what you're about to hear or to understand what you're about to hear. Today, what I want to tell you about is actually how to kind of extrapolate the angel information so that you can actually work with the angels every new and full and quarter moon. And if you're just starting to know about the moon, let me tell you, there's a new moon every month. That's when you can't see the moon. And then about a week later, we get the first quarter moon, which is when the moon looks like a half moon. Then about another week later, we get the beautiful full moon, which we've just had at the time that this podcast is being published. And then about a week after that, we get the last quarter moon, when again, the moon looks like a half moon. And then finally, we go back to the new moon about a week later. So that's a monthly or monthly cycle. So Back in the day, I told you I wrote a book with Doreen Virtue called Angel Astrology 101. It's kind of a funny story how that book actually came into being. I was in Australia. I was in the office of Mr. Leon Naxon, the marvellous head of Hay House Australia. And I said to him, I love to write a book about angels and astrology. I knew there was a correlation between angels and astrology. And he said, well, if you're going to write about angels, you're going to have to talk to Doreen Virtue. And Doreen Virtue at the time was probably Hay House's, well, not probably, was definitely Hay House's absolutely number one author. She was absolutely amazing. She would come to Australia once a year and hold a three-day workshop event, usually up on the Gold Coast, which is on the sort of the northern part of the East Coast. And, uh, you know, hundreds of people would attend. It was always a massive, massive event. And I was really in awe of her. So I was like, oh, my goodness, okay, sure, why not? I would love to talk to Doreen Virtue. Leon, are you going to introduce me? Anyway, he actually did. So eventually, not much later, he sent me an email saying, CCing Doreen, saying, okay, Doreen, meet Yasmin, Yasmin, meet Doreen. Apparently, you guys could write a book about angels together. I'm like, oh my God. (laughs) Um, Anyway, so the next part of this story is kind of what's quite amusing was Doreen said to me, oh, okay, well, um, you know, if we're going to write a book together, I would need to know which angels you feel go with which star sign. I was like, hmm, okay. And I actually thought what she was doing was that she was giving me some kind of test. It just sounded, the way she said it to me, it sounded like there was a test, like I need to know which angels you think go with which star sign, Yasmin, before I can commit to writing with you. So I kind of sat on that for a week or two thinking, all right, well, I've got to work that out, you know, really clearly because I I hadn't really 100% worked it out. I'd done some research, but I hadn't finalised it. And there's no one book that gives you the definitive answer. So after a couple of weeks, not wanting to let too much time go past, I thought, right, I've got to do this. I kind of meditated on it. I'd prayed on it. I'd sort of just asked the universe to help me. And I thought, right, now it's time for me to put pen to paper to sit down and decide what angel, which angel goes with which sign. And I didn't know that much about the angels, though, of course, I knew a lot about astrology. I knew a little bit. So I sat on the floor of my home back then in Bondi Beach in uh, lovely old Glasgow Avenue, and I, I took out a sheet of A4 paper. And down one side, I wrote a column of all the angel, the archangel's names. And on the right hand side, I wrote down the 12 star signs and then I, I got the and I got the pen and you know when you can sort of trace a line from the thing in the left-hand column to something in the right-hand column and it's not necessarily right opposite, it might be 
the top name, the bottom name on the right, the, on the top name on the left hand side, and the bottom name on the right hand side. So I kind of I meditated, I prayed, I reflected, I breathed, I meditated a bit more, and I literally just did all the correlations from one name to the other. All the archangels, Ariel and Shamuel and Zadkiel and Mo- and Gabriel and all all of them. So there it was, and I'd done it, and I had my list of which angel I thought went with which star sign. So hoping that I had passed this test for the great Dorian virtue, I then wrote it up and, you know, just wrote down what I had come up with and sent it over to Doreen. And then the next day, because Doreen was always extremely good on email, she was like super responsive, a bit like Deepak Chopra, actually. It's amazing, these people, these super successful people, they all answer their emails straight away. Anyway, so the next day, I think it was, I got a reply back from Doreen going, oh, well, that's great. That's actually nine out of the 12 are exactly the same as I use. Um, and one of them, the one for Capricorn, is only not correct in my book because I don't use Archangel Michael for the 12 star signs. And then she explained that she had actually already written about this in a book previously published and out there in the world. So what she was kind of saying when she said to me, you know, which angel do you think goes with which star sign, it wasn't actually a test. It was actually her saying, she didn't explain at the time and I didn't know, that she had written about these connections, the correspondences between the angels and astrology, and she could have sort of Like if I thought something completely different, it would have been a bit awkward for her to suddenly turn around and go, okay, well, we're going to just change this. So it was actually, that was the story of how we ended up doing it. She was like, well, nine out of 12 plus I don't use Archangel Michael anyway. So you could almost say 10 out of 12, we got the same. Let's write the book. (laughs) And so we did write the book, um, mainly consisting of us having a chat once a week, talking about the various qualities of the angels. I was kind of learning about the angels and I, as I went along and, of course, I was able to give her lots of information about the corresponding astrology. And we ended up with the list, which I'll give it to you just in case you don't know it, okay? And, you know, if you hear your star sign here, that's great. You'll then know your the sign that rules your star sign or your rising sign or your moon sign. Listen to out to all of them. But I'm actually going to teach you how to use it in a slightly different fashion. I'm going to pause the podcast for a moment to tell you about my Working with the Moon Angels workshop, which you can find out about at moonmessages.com forward slash angel22. That's the number two, the number two. One of the most beautiful ways you can work with your astrology chart is to tune into the Moon Angels with it. But In this workshop, I'm going to be doing things slightly differently. I'll be combining everything I know about how angels and astrology dovetail perfectly and how you can use this information to bring the moon angels into your moon practices every new, full and quarter moon. It's honestly so easy once you know how. Honestly, you'll start to wonder why they don't teach this stuff in school. So catch my workshop, moonmessages.com forward slash angel22 or just check the show notes for a link. So Aries goes with Archangel Ariel. Taurus goes with Archangel Shamuel. Gemini goes with Archangel Zadkiel. Cancer or Moon Child goes with Archangel Gabriel. Leo with Archangel Raziel. Virgo with Archangel Metatron. Libra with Archangel Jophiel. Scorpio with Archangel Jeremiel. Sagittarius with Archangel Raguel. Capricorn with Archangels Azrael and I include Archangel Michael. Once you start to learn about the Archangels, you will see Archangel Michael and Archangel Capricorn go hand in hand. Aquarius with Archangel Uriel and Pisces with Archangel Sandalphon. So, That was all a very long time ago. And as you may or may not know, Doreen Virtue later rejected pretty much every single book she'd ever written for Hay House. Um, She rejected all her past teachings, all her workshops, 
um, all her online courses as she went down a very, how would you say, I mean, just a very, 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 very straight Christian path and she rejected anything she felt was even vaguely new age, including her work with the angels as far as I'm aware and definitely anything to do with astrology, which was really sad. But, you know, she was a great teacher while she was teaching and everybody has to do them, you know, do their thing. And uh, so what happened was that our book, Angel Astrology 101, the rights actually reverted to me. And at the moment I think the book is not in print, Um, although we are, Hay House and I are talking about getting it back in print, but I want to augment it. And I want to augment it with a bit of the information I want to give you now, which is actually what I'll also be going into a lot in my workshop uh, that's going to be coming up very soon. I think tomorrow by the time you hear this episode or you can you can buy it after the event, uh, which is all about angels and astrology, which you can find out about at uh, moonmessages.com forward slash workshops and just look for the angels uh, workshop. So the way you can work with the angels that's so fun and so different and so inspiring and so enlightening and helps you to get to know the angels a bit like I got to know them better while writing this book is by pairing them with each new moon or full moon. So for example, we've just had the full moon in Sagittarius. So that would have been a time to call on Archangel Raguel, who's the Sagittarius angel. Um, Or, you know, if there's a new moon in the sign of Aquarius, then you might call in Archangel Uriel. Or if there's a quarter moon in the sign of Aries, then you might call in the Archangel Ariel. So what is the point of doing this? Okay, so the first thing is it really helps you to get to know the angels. The angels are the most incredible messengers of the gods, Angels are beings of light. Um, If you want to read about angels, you know, my beautiful friend Kyle Gray has written books about angels, which are just amazing. Angel energy will never let you down. The angels are there, but you have to call on them. So I think there are three ways for you to use the angels um, every new and full moon. I'm going to talk about this in more depth in my workshop, but just for the sake of this podcast now, I'll just give you three ideas of how to work with the angels every new moon, okay? So the first one is to know your ruling angel, and that is actually the angel that rules your rising sign, okay? Okay. So just say you are Virgo rising, then Archangel Metatron, for example, would be your guiding angel, all right? So when you make your new moon wishes um, at the new moon, then it's a really good time to call in your guiding angel, your number one guiding angel, because the the rising sign is the most personal point on your astrology chart, and just call in Archangel, the Archangel that goes with your rising sign and just ask for help with helping to make your wishes to come true and inspiring you to take the action that you need to take in order to manifest your dreams and also for help in, in raising your vibration so you can raise your vibration to the level that it will be at once your wishes come true because if you know anything about manifesting, you know that you have to raise your vibration to the vibration you'll be at if and when your wishes are fulfilled. That's actually probably the biggest secret of manifesting. So you can ask the angel that rules your rising sign to help you with your wishes. The next thing you can do is you can think about which sign the new moon is in. So just say the new moon is in the sign of cancer, moon child. That would be the Archangel Gabriel. So the Archangel Gabriel, you could say, is presiding over the new moon that particular month. Every month we get the new moon in a different sign. You can find all this out in my Moonology Diary. It's all in there, which sign the moon is in. And so what you can do is you go, okay, so it's a new moon in moon child or cancer this month. That's the Archangel Gabriel. So maybe what you can do, for example, is you can write a letter to Archangel Gabriel You can just talk to Archangel Gabriel or one thing I love to do is to go on the internet, print out a picture of Archangel Gabriel or whichever angel and 
I mean, I'm a bit obsessive, so I'd probably put it through my laminating machine or if you don't have a laminating machine, cover it in sticky tape or scotch tape or whatever you call it where you live just to kind of like make it a bit more permanent and put it on your altar for the month because, you know, we only get one new moon a month and so that can be the presiding angel for the month ahead. And then you can meditate, you can talk to the angels, you can light candles and just ask for help. And the third and final way you can do it, and again, I am going to go into this in more depth in the workshop. This one's a bit harder to explain without visuals, but essentially what it is, is once you understand the way astrology and angels works, you'll then start to know, okay, well, say for example, if you are Gemini rising, then you know that Sagittarius rules your seventh house, which is your love zone. So therefore, the angel that guides your love zone would be Raguel or maybe you've got Leo rising, therefore Archangel Uriel would rule your love zone. Again, I'll explain this more in the workshop. I'd love to see you there. But once you know that, okay, then you can look at each new moon and you can see where it's taking place in your chart. So just say, for example, you have Libra on your 10th house of career and ambition and it's the new moon in Libra so you know there's a new moon in your career zone and you want to make some changes in your career then you can call on Archangel Jophiel who's the Libra Archangel and ask for help with your career okay so it can be actually really really personalized so just to kind of summarize that again because I don't want you to think it's too complicated you can just make a wish okay, and just ask your guiding angel, whichever angel rules your rising sign, ask the angel that rules your rising sign for a bit of help with whatever it is you're wishing for. You can look at the sign that the new moon is taking place in that month and just ask that particular angel for help and put a picture of them on your altar and just know that they are the guiding angel for the presiding angel for the month ahead but until the next new moon. Or if you know your chart and you really want to be a really good student, figure out which house in your astrology chart the new moon is taking place in and uh, ask the angel that rules that house. I will explain to you how to work that out at the workshop. Ask the angel for help with that part of your life over the coming 12 months. So there we go. So I really hope that uh, gives you some ideas of how to work with the angels at the new and the full and the quarter moon. I'll give you more details in the workshop about the quarter moon as well. But overall, you know, after Doreen um, decided to be to sort of go down that new path and sort of rejected all her old work, I didn't really know where that left me with the angels because I've always had a very strong intuition that I should always stick with astrology and moonology. Um, as much as I was attracted to lots of other things like angels and goddesses and chakras, and I still use them all in my work. But I was sitting in the bath and I had this really, really strong intuition and the intuition was from the angels. It was like they were speaking to me and they basically said, even though Doreen is no longer going to be doing this work, we really want you to continue to talk about the angels and spread the word about the angels. And so I've continued to do that and this podcast is part of that. I believe the angels really, really want to help us And uh, if you're new to the idea of angels, just find out your rising sign, find out which is your guiding angel and start to talk to that angel and see how it goes for you, okay? So I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for listening and I'll speak to you next week. I hope you've enjoyed this week's podcast. If you'd like to attend my Working with the Moon Angels workshop, you can find it at www.moonmessages.com forward slash angel two two that's the number two and the number two or just click the link in the show notes the angels are calling (laughs) 